Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Uh, Council Member Reboltz will be dialing in, or we'll be dialing him shortly, so he is, uh, will be part of the uh, meeting tonight from a remote. As I ask you to uh, rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, I ask you to uh, stay standing afterwards for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment of silence for a family going through a tough time in Madison. As anyone following what was going on in Madison earlier this week felt, as a parent, the tough things you can go through. The Murano family lost their son. Mary Murano is a crossing guard out there every day crossing her children. The brother, Michael Murano, is maintenance in this building, so a moment of silence to recognize their lost brother and son and as far as they're going through. Thank you. Welcome on this cold evening, second month in a row that we've had a Wednesday meeting, a fairly rare event. We had a great uh, gathering on uh, Condorso Way for Veterans Day, recognizing all the veterans. And I know we have several veterans in the audience, so two days after Veterans Day, as I said on Veterans Day, one day a year you cannot, is not adequate to thank you. We should be doing it 365, so thank you. Congratulations to Rob Catanello. And uh, welcome to another three years. <laughs> Thank you. And also, uh, we'll see over here on the wall, Pat Rowe, Councilman-elect. He'll be auditing the next uh, few meetings so he can hit the ground running. But as I said earlier, uh, to a smaller group, he is no, obviously no stranger to council meetings. And he has been working very closely with the council for many years on two key committees, and that was Shared Services and the Green Village Road School project. The employee of the month, and it's good to see uh, Jimmy Finelli, who is not the employee of the month this time, but it's, it's, it's always an honor when you see someone that sees the work of great of great person and nominates an employee of the month. So Jimmy was a, a, a nominated Luis Alicia of the uh, Dep Department of Public Works for his expertise and dedicated work in trimming, pruning, reshaping the shrubs and trees on all the borough properties. And not only did Jimmy recognize it, but he heard the compliments from all of our residents that saw this fine work. So uh, congratulations to Luis and uh, Jimmy again, thank you for taking the time to do the nomination. And anniversary. Um, at one point we celebrated this person's retirement, but uh, sometimes you just love this place so much to stay on. But Ruth Tisi is now celebrating 30 years with the Borough of Madison. So if you're in the... Um, building uh, or the zoning office at any time, you'll see uh, Ruth providing the extra support. We'll probably hear our, a bit more from our um, liaison to public safety on uh, what has gone on in town as far as uh, fires over the last couple of weeks, a very tough time. Um, but the uh, fire department and all the supporters came through there was a fire on uh, Green Avenue, a home. Officer uh, Kevin Boone kicked the door in to rescue one of the uh, residents that was trapped in the kitchen. And then a week ago Tuesday, the fire on Green Village Road on that beautiful apartment building. And what I want to share right now is a uh, letter from Mark Yeager. Some, some people, many people will know him because he grew up in Madison. He was the owner and developer of that building, and you know, barely a week away from the tragedy, and as he's working through what he's gonna to do to uh, recover from that, he felt the need to write a letter to thank all that were involved. So please uh, bear with me as I read through this. Dear Mayor, as we are well aware, very early last Wednesday morning, we witnessed a devastating fire at 39 Green Village Road. 
the 90-year-old building was two months away from completion of an extensive capital renovation plan when fire struck and severely damaged the building. The primary purpose of this note is to tell you how appreciative I was of the Madison Fire Department's efforts last Wednesday morning. Fire Chief Lou DeRosa and his entire department did a spectac spectacular job of controlling the fire, protecting the surrounding structures, maintaining a safe and orderly environment in the midst of a tremendous amount of chaos and leading the, and leading the coordinated effort with other Madison departments and agencies, as well as first responders and 11 other municipal fire departments who were called to the scene. The fire department's effort and professionalism was something that all borough residents and officials should be proud of and I'm personally very thankful for. I would also like to acknowledge the other Madison first responders who's present on the site last Wednesday morning at a significant comfort we all took as that things were all being taken care of. Chief Datchison and the Madison Police Department. Mike Piano here in the audience and Madison Electric Department. David Maines from DPW and Madison Water Department. Mark Cacavell and the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps all responded with the same speed and professionalism as the fire department. They too should be commended and recognized for their tremendous effort and contribution on the scene. I'd also like to thank Father George of St. Vincent's for providing water to the first responders and all the support they needed and also opening the rectory for any neighbors needing housing for the night. Watching that beautiful old building burn last Wednesday morning was a gut-wrenching experience that I will never forget. Thankfully, and largely due to the actions of the Madison first responder teams, no one was injured and all that was damaged was the building itself. I am eternally thank you, thankful for that. I have always been extremely proud of my roots in the Madison community, but never more so after experiencing the support of all the Madison professionals that came to assist last Wednesday morning. Signed, Mark Yeager, Principal of MRY Associates. So, great job all. I think we should just uh, give them all a hand. <laughs> Next week, several of the uh, elected officials and uh, Borough professionals are heading down to the League of Municipalities, and it's not just attending uh, workshops that help us serve bur the Borough of Madison better, but we're actually going to be collecting some hardware down there this year, which is not too rare for us. We um, will be receiving the 2013 Innovation and in Government Award for the Chief Executive Council for Madison program, which was initiated with the Borough, and the Mayor's leadership, along with Quest Diagnostics and Drew University. And we've had the efforts through that uh, organization with Union Beach, also working with the uh, leaders of tomorrow. I witnessed a panel yesterday at Drew University as we had several CEOs helping Drew students think about the steps they need to take to become business leaders. And the other thing we'll be doing is accepting the silver certification for sustainable New Jersey. We, we received 455 points, far in excess of the number required and it's the highest point value of any municipality of our size in New Jersey. And so we will be receiving a Sustainable Jersey Champion Award. So thank you, Betsy Ullman, Ostry, Jim Burnett, and all the volunteers that made this possible. And I, I see a couple of uh, Academy Road um, residents in the audience. And so you're um, obviously always welcome to stay and, and comment, but I just want to bring you up to date that we will be, the uh, engineering department is working on the uh, engineering plans for the 2014 projects, which include Academy Road, but also include uh, several others, such as Durwood, Fletcher, that have been mentioned before. The, the funding cycle, as, as we've mentioned a few times, is we fund it starting in January. We'll have those discussions capital. What we're planning to do this year are twofold. One is get the capital budget taken care of as soon as possible so we, can, we know where we're going. And number two, as we're doing right now, is have the plans in place. We don't want to go out to bid in June, July, and we're all of a sudden, we're now at towards the end of the construction season. We want to, as soon as the construction season is ready, we're ready to go. So that is the plan, and we'll, we'll keep you up, up to date. And um, certainly, as I said, we always love to see smiling faces here, but if you want to get up to date, you can give me a call, Ray Cody or Jim Burnett, and we can just give you the latest updates. And now with uh, reports from committees, and we're going to hold on for just a second as we bring um, 
Councilman Rebold's on board. I'm oh, sorry. I'm, uh, I jumped the greeting ahead of the minutes. But it's good to have Red on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed, are you there? Hello? Okay. Hi, Ed, it's Jim Burnett. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Well. All right. Well, welcome, Ed. We're, uh, we saved you listening to my comments, and we're now on to um, minutes for approval. So I ask for a motion on the minutes of October 16, 2013. I'll move them. I'll second. And these were discussed in executive. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholt? Yes. <clears throat> Motion for the regular minutes of October 16th, 16, 2013. I'll move the regular minutes of October 16th. I'll second. Discussion? And Ed, you're fine with those? Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholt? Yes. And I have a motion for the executive minutes of October 28, 2013. I'll move them. I'll second. Already discussed. Already. Oh, oh we, feedback, feedback. Yeah, a little too much there. Okay. I was getting scared hearing my own voice. Um, uh, where were we? Motion for the regular minutes of October 28, 2013. I think we need a, we, don't we need a vote. Executive. Yeah. Right, that's where we were. All right. We, we did first we, and second. Yep. We did so second. we okay. vote call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rebholt? Yes. All right. A motion for the regular minutes of October 28, 2013. I'll move the regular minutes of October 28th. I'll second. Discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitelli? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. And Mr. Rebholt? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, moving to reports from committee. And uh, Ed, we mentioned to save you the speaking time and all that, we'll have um, Carmela provide your report also, so it's still good? Sounds good, okay. So, uh, Ms. Vitale, if you can do health and utilities. I will, thank you, Mayor. Um, on Friday, uh, November 29th, the uh, Madison Elks were, uh, will be hosting a blood drive from 10 a.m. in the morning to 3 p.m. Um, the co-hosts are the Venture Boy Scouts, and uh, the American Red Cross. And the lodge is located, as most of you know, at one, uh, 192 Main Street. Um, on blood drive day, be sure to eat well, drink plenty of liquids, and bring an ID. Um, if you have any questions, you could call John Kennedy, who is, um, is kind of chairing this with the Venture Boy Scouts. Uh, and his number is 973-377-0373 or just go to rosenet.org. Uh, there's lots of information, but um, the, mm -hmm. the blood drive is very important. Um, we're, we're going into a season that uh, we may need a lot of help. Um, as a safety reminder, um, if you have any unwanted or expired medications, uh, the Madison Police Department at the Public Safety uh, Building uh, offer a 24-hour secure drug take-back program and um, there's a, a nice container there. You could go in at any time and drop off any of that medication. Sometimes it's easier to do that because they know what to do as far as em environmentally safe and uh, disposing of those. Um, the health department is also um, sponsoring a men's cancer screening. Uh, it's free uh, for men on Monday, uh, December 9th, beginning at 6 p.m. at the Madison Health Department. 
the cancer screening is open to men 18 years of older who reside in Madison, Chatham Borough, Chatham Township, um, and Springfield, uh, which are our contract towns. You, it is necessary for you to make an appointment so you can call the, um, the health department, um, you know, starting um, on Thursday, November uh, 14th. So, you know, please make your, um, your appointments there. Um, this is, uh, I'm, I'm doing this for Ed Rebholtz. This is from the Madison Electric Department, uh, Mike Piano, superintendent. Um, they are continuing installation of new poles, secondary and primary voltage uh, uh, cables on Oxford Lane and Canterbury Road. And they just completed an installation of uh, Don Link's Monument Light. So uh, they've been working on that. Um, Mike and I talked about it last night. We haven't seen it in the dark yet, so we, we have to go up there and take a look and make sure it's working good. But thanks, Mike, for that, that extra help. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Catanello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the sports fields parking lot at the former Bailey Ellard property has been completed by Tilcon New York General Contractor. Fencing installation and final signage have been installed. This project was completed on budget and on schedule. The project remains to be inspected and approved by the licensed site remediation professional, and then final documents can be sent to New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, notifying it of the project completion. Uh, the Green Avenue reconstruction work uh, continues, uh, managed by Cefeli and Sons General Contractors. Curb and sidewalk improvements will continue this week despite the cold temperatures. We are hopeful to have the milling and paving completed prior to Thanksgiving, uh, weather permitting. This project is proceeding on budget and on schedule. The Hartley Dodge boiler replacement is underway by Omega Service General Contractors. The new boilers have been operating manually since Tuesday morning, and mm. temporary boiler trailer has been removed from the rear of the building. Although a significant number of punchless items remain to be completed, staff now has both heat and hot water for the fall season, and the project has not caused any lost work days. Settlement of multiple contractor delays prior to closeout is still required, and meetings will be scheduled this month to address the balance of claims. The 2013 water main replacement is near completion by Garcia Construction General Contractors. Contractor intends to use infrared paving treatment on Park Avenue County Road in order to obtain release of the county bonds. Uh, we are, uh, DPW informs me they're starting their second round of uh, leaf pickup. Uh, again, the preferred uh, methodology is to use uh, bags. Um, and if you're going to put it on the curb, uh, please uh, do your best not to uh, have them spill out into the, into the roadway. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Friday, November 28th is the annual Christmas walk and parade. Uh, the walk and parade starts at 4 o'clock, and the tree lighting will be at 5.30 that day. Uh, MAC will be hosting an arts festival that will go on throughout the festivities. And then the day after, Saturday, November 30th, is Small Business uh, Saturday in Madison. Uh, please, everybody, try to support the businesses in town. Um, a lot of them are just getting by on a shoestring right now, and our downtown is the, one of the most important parts of Madison. So please try to support them. Um, the DDC, in, again, helping to support the downtown uh, from November 22nd through the end of the year is uh, supporting a, a, a recommendation that all the one-hour parking spots be made two-hour parking spots. So... Uh, Look out for that. The sign will be put up. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Ms. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, the mayor has already spoken a little bit about the fire department, but the fire department was very busy over the past four weeks. Uh, four firefighters completed a 20-hour weekend course given at the Morris County Fire Training Academy titled Firefighter Safety and Survival. Over the past four weeks, the Madison Fire Prevention Bureau has visited all the schools, grades K through 8, six daycare centers and our seniors at 15 Chateau Terry teaching fire safety in the home to approximately 2,500 residents and students. Over the past four weeks, uh, the fire department responded to 129 calls, 78 were fire related, 
51 were medical assists. Of the 78 fire calls, five were structure fires. They also responded to four mutual aid requests, and we received mutual aid four times from our neighboring departments. Hmm. So far in 2013, the fire department has responded to 1,059 calls. Um, the first uh, structural fire was Monday, October 14th at 2 p.m. in the bathroom at Dunkin' Donuts. Cause was due to a malfunctioning ex exhaust fan. The fire damage was contained to the bathroom and smoke filled the store, but it was reopened after the Board of Health inspected the premises, I think, the next day. And then they assisted Chatham on October 28th. On October 29th, uh, they had, there was a fire at on the third floor of 300 Madison Avenue, and the offices were filled with smoke and had to be ventilated, but they were able to contain the damage to the wall of origin. And then on October 31st, they really were busy. Um, they had the big fire on 125 Green Avenue in the kitchen, um, and luckily no one was hurt. Um, and then at 39 Green Village Road on November 5th, where the towns, 11 towns assisted us. And they were on the scene starting late um, at 11.24 p.m. Tuesday, November 5th, and they were still on the scene the next day at 6.30 a.m. And I know I got the call at noontime that day to, to tell me that what had happened. Um, so we have a tremendous fire department, and I want to thank them very, very much for keeping us safe. And for the police department, I want to congratulate Officer Shannon and his wife. They just had a baby uh, on November 11th. And thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Wilkowitz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the budget process, uh, which is a process that we seem to be in at least half the year, is uh, well underway. We've been going over departmental requests, getting a better idea of what it is each department would like to have, if at all possible. And we're also looking at the revenue side. Two things we're going to attempt to do a little differently than last year. One is to talk about the budget in a multi-year context. And the other one is to focus in on certain aspects of the budget that are really key drivers of the end result and do that at public meetings. Uh, I have some information and updates on shared services, uh, all good. We have, as some of you may know, a shared service agreement with Chatham uh, Borough regarding construction code functions, uh, electric, plumbing, and fire. We're expanding that basically to do all of their construction code work, and uh, we estimate that this could generate as much as 75000 a year. Obviously, it depends on how much construction is ongoing. Uh, it's not quite approved yet, but uh, obviously if we weren't optimistic, I wouldn't be talking about it. So we anticipate this closing before the end of the year. Earlier on, I'd also mentioned expanding the joint uh, court to include Morris Township. There was one small piece of that that we've been waiting on, and that is for the assignment judge of Morris County to approve this arrangement, and indeed he did. And so we're looking forward to welcoming uh, Morris uh, township into this into our court system uh, and that should generate revenue of approximately 50,000 a year so uh, it's nice to see upticks in these and I have one more to talk about so it's good evening uh, the other one is has to do with our police department our police officers now uh, are able to provide service for profit and nonprofit organizations in town on their own time and when they do that, they bill at $65 an hour. 60 goes to the patrolman, five goes to the borough for use of the car, insurance, et cetera. That number, that $5, has clearly been on the low side. And the total of 65 is well below the market. So we've asked to update and upgrade that fee to $80. 60 would still go to our officers, but now 20 would come back to the borough. And um, the, our police officers are fine with it. There's no reason why we shouldn't do it. We don't expect that it'll, it'll have an adverse impact on the demand for their services. And based on the amount of service they provided last year, we're anticipating that our revenue generated will go to $100,000. So um, it's, um, we have three things to talk about, all of which are, uh, if not home runs, pretty close. And then finally, I just want to say the strategic planning 
uh, committees are in formation. We have a lot of volunteers. We always talk about how wonderful this town is in terms of attracting volunteers. This is no exception. It's very much in rule, and uh, we will soon be talking among ourselves as to who should chair these various committees, and we'll be coming out with that information, and in addition, who will be on those committees. Um, if you have not put your name forward and are interested, please do so. And I would just like to point out that uh, I believe a lot of our responses due to Sally Capone's very nice article in the Eagle. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Communications and petitions. Um, none received, Mayor. Thank you. All right, this is the first of two invitations for discussion. This is the one with the, lim the limiting rules where you may comment on any of the agenda discussions and resolutions. The agenda discussions we have tonight are the, Madi the quarterly mm -hmm. Madison Athletic Foundation report and a recommendation to adopt an advisory audit committee. The resolutions are all listed. And, and a reminder on ordinances, we have ordinances 45 and 46, which are, we have hearings for tonight, which means if you want to comment on those, that will be the time to comment when we call up those hearings. And the other ordinances that are listed for introduction We'll have a hearing at our next meeting, so you'll be able to comment on those at that time. So with that guideline, and knowing that you must keep your comments to three minutes or less, please step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, and then you can start going. Anyone wishing to comment on the agenda items or resolutions? Seeing that, I close this part of the agenda. We move on to agenda discussions. And we have the Madison Athletic Foundation quarterly report. Brian Agnew, welcome. Brian Agnew, 15 East Lane, Madison, New Jersey. How are you, Astrid? This will serve as the, uh, the third quarter update on behalf of the Madison Athletic Foundation and our efforts to, um, to raise $1.275 million for debt reduction for the MRC, the Madison Recreation Complex turf field, turf field complex. Um, earlier this year, uh, we uh, presented a check for $100,000 uh, to the council uh, on top of the $400,000 that we have raised to date, uh, so for a total of $500,000 versus the original goal of $1.275 million. We've been active in 2013. Um, in the back half of 2013, we had applied and we've been awarded a $25,000 grant from a local foundation. We received 18 incremental uh, club donations, M club donations uh, in the year 2013. Field signs uh, continue to be underway. So far there's 12 installed and one additional uh, that's waiting to be uh, hung up. We anticipate the 2013 annual appeal, uh, which we did last year and was very successful. Uh, that mailing will go out within the next couple weeks. And we've been in contact through Rob Catalanello, who is our council liaison, uh, and we are soliciting um, corporate donors uh, for sponsorships at the complex. I wanted to add, we also built the M Club wall, uh, funded it internally, um, and to date have sold 35 signs uh, with a goal to obviously sell an incremental 65, which is the capacity for the first side of the M Club wall. As a reminder, the M Club uh, field signs are $3,500. So, so far we've raised about $100,000 from 35 signs. Uh, we anticipate 2014 being um, incredibly active. We, uh, as you know, we've committed to do the $100,000 raffle every other year. Uh, we did it in 2012, uh, so 2014 will be another year of the 50-50 raffle. That is going to be launched in early 2014 with an anticipated spr uh, spring 2014 drawing. That raised uh, $80,000 last time. We will also endeavor to undertake the, uh, the annual event, which we did at the MRC complex last year. That's going to be a, sp a spring event. We will also do the annual appeal. Our goal is to, do, uh, to try and raise another 10 M Club um, signs in 2014. Uh, we're continuing the field sign program. Um, and I think the net of all that is uh, if the balance of the, of the commitment of $1.275 million is roughly $775,000, uh, which over an ensuing 2014 to 2018 period uh, works out to about $155,000 per year, I would simply say uh, we're confident in our goals for 2014. Comments and ju just a point of how we're going to be doing things with our one council member on the phone is we'll take 
for all our discussion items, discussion in the room, and I'll just call on Ed to see if he has anything to add at that point because he can't raise his hand easily. So uh, any uh, comments or questions for Brian? Well, I, I have a question. Yes, Thank Oster. you, Mayor. Um, Brian, you said you've raised uh, five hundred thousand dollars to date. Yep, four hundred plus a hundred to date. Okay. So, um, does that mean like over a period of years? I mean, the twenty. Yes, okay. since since we started. So then, I guess the question is, uh, of the of the five hundred thousand um, dollars, is was part of that um, in payment for the uh, field house? Was the field house, or did it come directly to the borough to offset the debt? Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. The field house was outside of that. What's that? Yeah, the field house was outside of that. Uh, it's, it's, it's part. It is part. So, of that. so we, we, which is why the, the goal is higher than the the goal that was discussed in um, for towards the field itself. They, I know the I know that the goal that when we had the meeting at the numbers that I communicated. Okay. Maybe we can take it offline, but th yeah. that, that's our understanding. All right, yeah. Um, I don't have it. The notes in front of me, so. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So what was the cost of the field house? You have the actual construction numbers? No. No, no, no. Not even. Not even. Oh. Hang on. We'll get you the exact number sheet. 113. So then does the remainder of that sum then go towards um, the debt of the, the turf fields? Or were there other expenses in that $500,000 that go <clears throat> towards other parts of the, the company? Everything has been self-funded, so yes, yeah, so like they paid for the wall out of it, and, and uh, you have to pay for the plaque, things like that. Uh, so you pay, for the cost of, you pay for the cost of the, um, of the field signs as well. So. It, I think it would be helpful um, if it's not too much trouble to if you could you know submit an, a list of of what you paid for in that number so we would have a good idea in accounting I mean if you could write you know it could be a written report that accounts for what was spent so the, so we know what the well, yeah. do it in writing. Okay. Um, uh, Brent, 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 you're, you're welcome to add, but please, please step up to oh, the microphone. Thank you. Oh. The MAF made $170,000 debt payment last year. Okay. And, uh, in 2012. Or in 2013. In 2013. Beginning in 2013, there was okay. $70,000 payment and then $100,000 in May. Okay. Uh, end of May. And then... In 2012 and 2013 total, MAF paid all of the interest on any bond on the field. Thank you. Okay. I think what might be helpful for the um, next, next okay, but thanks. thank you. For, I, I think what might, might be help, helpful for the next report, Brian, is maybe work with Jim so we can come up with a standard report form because, you know, at this point, I don't think we need a PowerPoint or anything, but it's just, yeah, no, no. I, don't, I get confused on the test, you know, I'm worried about these numbers being on the test and I can't write them all down. So uh, yeah. It should be awfully simple going forward, though, because there's no expenses that will be incurred by the MAF. I mean, if anything, it's very nominal. But to yeah, your except point, for like, the yeah, cost I mean, of the I'm plaque. Write yeah. it down to yeah. see except for yeah. what goes The cost of the, so if someone makes the M Club, how much do those plaques cost? Like $140 yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah no, it's like 100 bucks. The cost of that and the cost to make the field sign. That's right. pretty much it. The, the big we expenses, all day long. <laughs> the big expenses <laughs> were, were, ju were the field house, obviously, which was outside of the, the realm, though, of there's been so many iterations, obviously, but outside of the realm of this $1.275 million, um, and then just building the wall. That's it. Yeah. Which was Good. about 10000 Good. Bob? Okay, yeah, so I just want to make sure I got these numbers straight in my head. So you, this goes out through the end of 2018, so you got yes. five more years. We've got years, five years. And you, so you're talking we owe 775000 a year. What? 175 a year? 155. 775 divided by five, 155. Okay, 155. okay. that's it. Mm -hmm. any, any other questions or discussion? Ed, Ed, do you have any questions or... All right. Point of clarification. I'm sorry. 
because there have been so many iterations, we kind of, you know, we've been back and forth and back and forth a million times. We went from this to Resolution 179, 2013. That was really the formalized yep. agreement or the reformalized agreement from the original agreement. Yep, that, that's. So we kind of went from there, which was resolution says MAF agrees to 1.275 million mm -hmm. raised to date as of April, 400,000. So we, that, we took that as zero hour and moved from there. We, don't, we gave the $100,000 in May, so. Oh. Makes sense. I mean, that's if, that's if that's we try to go back, I think if we try to, you know, if we try to go back to the beginning, that's it's going to be off. Right. No, that, 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 that works. Be better than Rob? No, that, that's okay. That oh, you're good. Rob? What I was going uh, Rob? Oh, I was going to say. You have a question just, for our last witness? Well, I do, in fact. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's why I said you should stay up there. Uh, we believe it or not, we don't see each other that much. Uh, <laughs> Brent is the brand uh, of the organization, yeah. by the way, if you can't tell. <laughs> so. Just to clarify, going forward, no user fees, field rentals. That's at, that's outside your totals, right? Right. The, look, right. That's that's yeah, fine. And yeah. and then, do you anticipate making another payment in 2013, or the next payment will be in 2014? I think if we if we got the, the, yeah. the proceeds from the foundation in 2013, we would make that payment. Yeah, but it's probably not going to hit till January, so you'll make right. it then. Okay. Depends when the check hits. Carmela. Yeah. Can I can I just ask a simple thing because I'm going like that. Look, I, can we get a copy of that report, at least, Brian, you know, so that yeah. we can distribute it, you know, amongst us? So, uh, you know, we just keep all of those which, numbers which clarified. Just well, the, whatever I, you've been talking one about. one page here. Okay. The one page is fine. Well, I think, I, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> ben, was it? There was no, an earlier we we, yeah, we, yeah, we never, uh, it didn't No, we get, never got it. Yeah. yeah. So Thank that was. Uh, I'll, I'll take you. one. No. No. Yeah. No. That, that's very much. Yeah. I'm a visual person. Sorry. <laughs> was there an earlier suggestion? I thought I heard that Jim Burnett would work. I, I, I thought if we could come up with a consistent that report, that, that'll make it a whole lot e easier yeah. on a quarterly basis. So it's boom, yeah. boom, you know. Exactly. Uh, raised prior, raised in the this quarter. Yeah, and, the the simple yeah. overriding numbers are 1.275, 500 to date, 775 yeah. to go, 155 over five years. That's our goal. Yep. We're on track to meet it. Sounds good. Fingers crossed. Yep. <laughs> Keep those donations coming. Any other comments or questions? I got a new right. M club today. So What's this? We got an, got I got an M, M club, club today from a client, which is nice. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. Brian. All right. So, advisory audit committee. Ben? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, We have no audit committee. Now, that's not necessarily a, a huge oversight, but as a former partner of mine used to say that um, we need to practice good financial hygiene, and good financial hygiene suggests you have an audit committee. It's not here to solve any problems. We're not second-guessing anyone. I've had long conversations with our CFO, Robert Califut. He's on board and thinks it's a good idea as well. The notion is that the process of auditing our books is still the responsibility of the CFO with council oversight. But the role of a committee like this is to have a hand in recommending who the auditor would be, reviewing the auditor's results with the CFO, and just overseeing the general risk control mechanisms that we have here in the borough. It is, uh, I, you know, I feel I have to emphasize this because we've never had one before, and you might ask, well, why do we need one now? And it's not a question of need. It's, it's just more a question of completeness. It's, it's uh, I, I have to say I was very surprised that we didn't have one. I tried to find out how many municipalities in New Jersey have them. I got nowhere, but I was left with the impression that we would certainly not be alone by having one. The notion is that uh, it would be made up of three to five residents of the community joined by the uh, finance chair of the council who would serve only a single year. He or she would serve just one year and then be replaced by the, the backup liaison to finance for the additional year. 
the members of the committee would serve for three years. And we would start off the committee, obviously, by staggering terms. So we'd appoint, appoint someone for a year, someone else for two, and someone else yet again for three. They would be responsible for reporting to the council, and the council would then have the benefit of their input in making decisions regarding auditors, any changes in how we do our business and accounting, et cetera. So that's the proposal. And um, as I said, I just think it's a question of, of basically dotting an I and crossing a T. Yep. So uh, two key things while, while I open it up. Well, this is typical best practices, as you mentioned, and number two is the idea advisory, that this is not taking any rights responsibilities that the council is, needs to take care of. Carmela? Yeah, um, Ben, I, I, you know, I, I've been thinking about this, and um, you're talking basically just the municipality, but included in the municipality are, you know, uh, the offshoots of people, uh, whether they're nonprofit or whatever, okay, mm -hmm. in the town that we subsidize, okay, right. that are already that are also doing audits on a yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Are you are you going to bring those in to kind of take a look at all those audits? I mean, for instance, you know, you have the library that does an audit. Right. Um, you know, um, even right down to the uh, Thursday Morning Club does an audit. Yes. You know, and we subsidize some of those. Right. Um, have you thought about, you know, encompassing all yeah. of this? The, you know, the, the short answer is no. No? Uh, I didn't think of uh, expanding the scope of our audits because of having this committee. Okay. On the other hand, this committee may well come back to the council and recommend that we do just what you said. And that's the sort of thing I would be expecting from a committee like this. Bob? Ben, uh, is this going to be just limited to auditing? Will it have any bleed over into the budget process? No, it's just auditing. Just auditing? Auditing, including risk controls, but that's, you know, it's part of the process. Rob? When you mention risk management, we're not talking about, like, derivatives, right? We're just talking, uh, I mean, I've seen it, you know, yeah. <laughs> right? No. So, it's just... I, I don't envision any change from what we do now. But they, okay. When would I they say consider risk that? I mean... I'm sorry? Yeah, I mean, that's not something they would consider, right? Or would the, since they'll be doing the audit, for the borough, one would assume that they would also do uh, audits for the electric utility and the water utility, or is that would that be separate? Um, th those are part of the borough There's audit. It's part of the borough's audit now, yeah. so they would fall in the same scope. So we yeah. do. We are doing some hedging, right? So I mean, are, are we going to? Is this all going to be encompassed in that, or no? I didn't. I, I didn't view them at, when I said risk management. I meant more in terms of. A, of the, the risk of the accounting risk. I wasn't I thinking in terms okay, not of the financial practical risk. financial yeah. risk. And, and may I just ask, why, why do you think that three years is a good term? Arbitrary. I, uh, you know, I... Well, it's, I it's fairly it's, consistent, I think, with many of our, uh, that we, many of our committees kind of go on. A lot on of our committees do right. that. Yeah. I mean, it, it is arbitrary. If, if there was some feeling it should be longer or shorter, I, you know, I doubt it. I, I, I think kind of our model, not, to the T is an annual appointment versus a rotating three years on various committees. And so whether you want to ha preserve some sort of continuity by having rotating three years, I think yeah, that's... I, I do think it has to be at least two yeah. because of the way the audit cycle goes. So you'd have a committee yeah. and they would, they would be opining on who should do the audit, but they wouldn't have the follow through of actually working with them. And then just the last one in the, um, in the management plan, no, I don't know if you're going to hold hard and fast to this, but I believe the rule of thumb is that you want to try to limit council liaison to two years uh, for any one right. thing. So yep. if in year one, the, I mean, I guess, so in year one, the finance liaison. I don't think Ed's listening. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, he got bored. He <laughs> So in, so in year one, the finance liaison is the, it leads the committee. Yes. This, this automatically assume we have the same, uh, then year two would be the backup. Yes. Um, I mean, so, so the backup in year one could be different in year two. That's in yeah, I, I think the goal was that there would not be the same chair two years, two years in a row. row. Yes. So, so if the, 
if the chair right. was different year one, year two, it could be the chair two years in a row, but it's not the same person two years yeah, in a row. Running this committee, yeah. yeah. Correct. That's the, that's the intent behind that. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions? And I do believe we do not have Ed on the line. We'll see. All right. So this is uh, Ordinance 47, 2013, which is listed for introduction. Again, we'll have a hearing in a week and a half. And now we move on to ordinances for hearing. I ask the borough clerk to read the statement. Okay. The ordinances scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on a first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on October 16, 2013. Uh, they were both posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the members of the general public requesting copies. I call the ordinances for second reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 45, 2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, supplementing Chapter 136 of the Code of the Borough of Madison, entitled Parks, establishing user fees for borough recreation programs and establishing the process to rent borough parks and fields. I open the hearing. Does anyone wish to comment on Ordinance 45-2013? Please step, step to the lectern, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 45 2013. I second. Council discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. And I believe we lost Mr. Redbolt. Yes, I have it. Okay. And I call up Ordinance 46, or, no, I'm sorry. I, I declare Ordinance 45-2013 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 46-2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 163 of the Borough Code entitled Smoking to prohibit smoking on all borough property including public parks and recreational areas. I open the hearing for Ordinance 46-2013. Ask anyone wishing to comment, please step up to the lectern, state your name and address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Hi, my name is Alan Kantz. Address is 80 River Road in Summit, New Jersey. Um, I'm here in support of this ordinance. I'm very excited to see um, a town with which I have a connection. I was a Drew University student, uh, graduated from Drew University in 2010. I'm very excited to see this town um, considering making its parks 100% smoke free. Uh, I think it's a, a wonderful move for the town, a wonderful move for the community. Um, already in, in this area, we've seen uh, Chatham Township and Borough both make their parks 100% smoke free. Um, and we've seen a lot of excitement in Madison over the idea of going 100% smoke free. Uh, we saw the Municipal Alliance and the Board of Health both express strong support for smoke-free parks. Um, and what we've seen across the state when towns make their parks smoke-free is that um, people seem to really like it. Uh, we, we now have over 120 municipalities in the state of New Jersey with 100% smoke-free parks. And what we see over and over again is that once people see that smoke-free parks are an option, they come to expect it as the norm and are shocked that they ever lived any other way. Um, and so we're excited to, to see Madison residents and, and people who live nearby like me um, get, get the opportunity to enjoy 100% smoke-free parks in Madison. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Good evening, my name is Karen Blumenfeld and I'm Executive Director of Global Advisors on Smoke-Free Policy and I reside in Summit at 147 Summit Avenue in Summit, New Jersey. And I too graduated from Drew, but um, a little earlier than Alan in 1984. And I have to say as a side note, when I enter this building and this council chambers, it reminded me so much of Mead Hall. This is an absolutely beautiful room. It's just magnificent. So a little side note. Um, but I, I love Madison. Um, my mom grew up actually in Chatham, and that's where my parents live now. And we were so pleased when Chatham Borough and the township did smoke-free parks. 
Um, I want to thank, um, there's so many people to thank actually that have been supportive of Smoke Free Parks. Um, Council President Vitale, of course, and the fellow council members, the mayor, um, the health department, the municipal alliance. This truly was a collaborative effort on behalf of the community. And it really is all about helping kids live tobacco free lives and creating healthy environments for everyone that either resides in the community or visits the community. And so uh, you probably saw these signs the last time um, when Alan and, and Lucille Talbot as well and um, Christine's here from the health department and Lisa Gula were also really helpful. These are the free signs that are provided from the State Department of Health. And we have 125 signs that we're giving you tonight. Um, in addition to um, 25 signs that'll be dropped off soon since your high schools and your actually K through 12 schools are all tobacco free. And so when we heard about that through the council president, we wanted to get some signs for you for that. And those are specific for your school. So that's separate. That's a policy that the Board of Ed did a while ago. But now you'll have continuity. So um, we're just very happy. We've got 10 towns in Morris County that already have 100% smoke-free parks policy. And if you decide to do a ribbon-cutting ceremony, we're happy to help you with that. And there's, there's lots of events and activities. And last but not least, um, Madison has also been a leader with Sustainable Jersey. And our organization um, recently has been speaking with them about uh, the ability of towns to get credits for certification. Um, and so we know that you have silver, I believe. And so the next time that you move on and to get recertified for silver or perhaps even gold, um, this is an opportunity for you to uh, gain points. And so we'll, we can talk with you about that another time. But there's so many great health, economic, and environmental benefits from this. Thank you again. Thank you so much. And I think I forgot to remind people to sign in on that clipboard right there. Alan, did you sign in? When? I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, great. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Carmel? Okay. Um, I move ordinance 46 2013. I second. Council discussion? I, I just want to say uh, thanks to Kara and Alan and, and to Masa, um, you know, for really working real hard. This, this is an important <clears throat> thing, is to keep our children very healthy and to keep people healthy. It's good for the environment as well. So um, thanks very much for coming, spending time with us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Any other council discussion or comments? Seeing none, roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello. Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. I declare Ordinance 46-2013 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Now we're on to invitation of discussion number two, which is uh, you may comment on anything appropriate to the borough, step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, uh, write the same on the clipboard, and please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone else, anyone wishing to be heard? Just step right out. Hello, Kevin Kilgore, Aid Academy Road. I'm begging you to pave our street. We'll come here week after week after week. Please pave our street. I didn't understand uh, what the actual policy is. You were describing it earlier. I was wondering if you could explain that again for us. Basically, the idea is to make sure we, we do capital budgets on an annual basis, though so there, there is an ability for a council to appropriate money for a, a special project. But what we found over the years, a couple of things, which is um, all the time that led to your frustration, is to make sure that an annual budget is rolled out at once so roads don't know, you know, they don't know where they stand. So we will have the full uh, 2014 road capital budget approved early in 2014, earlier than we did in previous years. We're already working on the design specifications, so we're not waiting for appropriation of money to get the ball rolling. So as soon as construction season starts next spring, we'll be able to tackle the uh, road projects. And so when will we know? It, it, it would be... Uh, First quarter, 2014. And is there any reason that we won't be on the top of that list? 
As far as I know, everything that uh, indicates is that it's a priority road and the funds are in place for that. Thank you very much. Yep. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mary Beth Forte, 7 Academy Road, just echoing my neighbor's comments around please pave our road. I know there was conversation at the last meeting around encumbering money to do so. I'm wondering if that's a continued conversation or do we have to wait to make sure we have our old spot on the list on the new list? It, yeah, as mentioned before, is the importance to roll out an annual uh, road project at once so that one, decisions are made with the, knowing the impact on all the roads. And number two is, as soon as you encumber for a single road, another road that has been on the list just as long, that whole neighborhood starts showing up. So it, it, it would be all at once. Once the budget is approved, the process is the plans get prepared, a budget is put together, and based on the budget, based on the plans, and an ordinance is passed that encumbers the money. And so that will all happen first quarter 2014. Are we starting from scratch and defining that list, or are we taking the existing list and using yeah, that? There, there, yeah, there's not a re redefinition of the list. It's the existing list and priorities gone, going through that list. Okay. Thank you. Uh, may I just, uh, and, and I, why it's important what the mayor is saying is that um, the plans are being done now so that, you know, once, it, once they start making asphalt again uh, after the winter's over, we can award the contracts as opposed to, like my first year on council when we did Pine Rose, Cedar, and Beach, they didn't start the plans until uh, like May or June, and then they actually didn't get it done that first year. It had to be done the beginning of the second year. So they, they want to beat that, right? And um, as far as I know, we, we still haven't closed on the Bello, the Bello Avenue property. So the, the $468,000 hasn't come in yet, so it couldn't have been appropriate anyway. But it's, what is very important to know is that Academy and Vinton are number two and three on the list behind Ridgedale, right? The current list, um, and uh, it's very important that the plans are done so you can hit the you can hit the road running, um, so to speak. and not have to wait. You know, and, and you know, like we're, we're all we all believe Green Avenue will be done, but if it just stays cold, they just can't lay the asphalt right this year. So we want to make sure everything is done on time and on budget. And, and I, th I think another key thing to keep in mind as far as the way we've changed things is we've had some years we were very ambitious. We had the funding all in place, but had such an ambitious capital project plan and the design work had not been done at all the year before. So the engineering department and all the consultants we use were behind the eight ball and couldn't get all the work done. By starting the design work now, we'll be well ahead of what we've done in the past. And that... Our expectation is that will be the norm and not the exception on how we run the business. And that's also will lead nicely into the whole strategic planning process of how we do business here. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Hi, Kristen Murray, 27 Academy Road, Madison. I'm wondering if the storm drains are included in that naturally because we have none. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Curbs too, Curbing right? Yeah. Yeah. Curbs. Curbs. Belgium yeah. block curbs. <laughs> Yeah, to, to, and I think I mentioned it before, but uh, we have pe different people at different times. There's different levels when we do roads. The more basic is the mill and overlay, which we take the machines, they strip off the, uh, an inch or so of the existing asphalt and just repave. That's done in roads that have good curbs and good stormwater. Neighborhoods that have stormwater that uh, management that's behind the th times get a full reconstruction, and that takes far more design work. So you have to design the stormwater management, where the inlets go, where the water goes once it's collected, and the curb, and, and so on. So that's what a, where Academy is. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Come on up, Carmen. Carmen Pico, North Street. I'd just like to thank whoever was involved in getting the sidewalks on King's Road uh, repaired so that the, the bumps uh, were not there anymore. Somebody put blacktop so that it would be smooth. 
and I figured I would come up and thank whoever it was because a lot of times, I've been to a lot of your meetings, a lot of times people will come up here and complain, and when their complaint is satisfied, you never see them back again to thank the person <laughs> that did it. So I'd just like, if you guys had anything to do with it, I'd like to thank the council for getting that safety hazard taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. And thank you for pointing out to me, and just a reminder for everyone that you're welcome to point out challenges like that at council meetings, but you're also very welcome not to wait to a council meeting when you see an issue to call Borough Hall and l let us know so we can get it to the right hands. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we move on to introduc introduction of ordinance and ask the borough clerk to read the statement. Okay, ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for December 9th, 2013. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call the ordinances up for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 47, 2013, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, establishing a standing advisory audit committee. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 47-2013. I second Ordinance 47-2013. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Call up Ordinance 48, 2013. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, mending Chapter 12 of the Borough Code entitled Court. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 48-2013. I second it. Council discussion. Ostry? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I just want to note that this is uh, an expansion of a shared service that we have already established here, and we're introducing a new town. Mayor, I move Ordinance 49-2013. I second it. Council discussion. Seeing none, roll call vote. Mr. Calanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Consent agenda resolution. May the clerk read the statement. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, consent agenda resolutions 301-2013 to 318-2013. I second. Council discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. There is no unfinished business. I just want to make sure everyone caught the uh, clerk when she read the statement on the ordinances as far as the hearing. I, I think I was mentioning that the uh, hearings for the ordinances introduced tonight would be next council meeting, but we have a short break in between, so it is the December meeting you'll we'll have those hearings. Uh, there is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Okay. Uh, public safety, $16,582.75. Health and public assistance, $3,938.14. Public works and engineering, $210,262.28. Community affairs, $2,216.46. Finance and Borough Clerk, $5,636,556.75. And Utilities, $162,352.20. Total is $6,031,908.51. Mayor, I move approval to the vouchers. Second. Discussion? Roll call a vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. There is no new business, and well, it's I, back uh, on you again, Ben. In, in the absence of our most junior council person, <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Yep. Let's go outside so we can warm up. Thank you.